Good evening. The Lawrence Alliance for Education board meeting for May 8th will now come to order. The time is 610. Uh, Maria, would, would you please call the attendance? Yes. Member Eka De Leon. Here. Member Juana Matias. Member Maria Moller. Present. Mayor Brian De Peña. Present. Student Rep. Present. Chair Mariano. Present. All right, um, would we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? And our, our student representative is going to lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Lewis. As you may have noticed, we have two new board members joining us this evening. I'd like to give Edgar and Warner an opportunity to tell a little bit about themselves, and we'll begin with Warner. Thank you, Pat. Um, my name is Juana Matias. I'm a Lawrence resident, former state representative here uh, for the 16th Essex District. It's on screen. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Uh, serving as regional administrator uh, for HUD personal capacity, looking forward to making sure that this board continues to ensure success for our students across this district, and honored to be here. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, and welcome. Edgar. Thank you, Pat. Uh, my name is Edgar DeLeon. I am currently the Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion at the Noble and Greeno School. I was a student here at the Lawrence High School and raised here in Lawrence uh, and look forward to working with the rest of the board, uh, but also looking forward to ensuring that our students uh, have the best uh, school system they can have. Thank you. Thank you, Edgar. <coughs> Excuse me. As we work together moving forward, I look, I look to this board for making decisions which will impact the education of our children in a positive manner. So thank you very much for participating. We'll, we'll continue with public participation. The board welcomes public comment at this time. We will call people in the order they have signed up. Each person is permitted to speak for no more than two minutes. A bell will ring when you have 30 seconds remaining and again at the end of the two minutes. I ask that you please respect this limit. Profanity will not be tolerated. If used, we will turn off the microphone and the person will be asked to leave the meeting. I'd like to remind everyone that during public comment, the board is in listening mode and as such, board members do not respond to comments. Written public comments may be sent by email to Info at Lawrence Alliance for Education org, no later than two o'clock the afternoon of the meeting. Our first um, gentleman for public participation is Mr. Mali. Would you please state your name and address? Homoyun Mali, 53 Chester Street. Good evening, honorable members. In this end of the year, one once again, Lawrence teachers and their union proved to be the best. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you for your struggle during the worst pandemic to help our children. Lawrence, we the citizens are united to support our teachers and their union. In the next budget hearing, we demand the best competitive wages for our hardworking teachers, Lawrence public school, for our professional and cafeteria workers. We are one city under God, united to support the best teachers and their union. Let's work together to have the best public education. In this, our struggle and search for new superintendent. We, we need a superintendent to support our teachers and their union and listen to our community. We, we are united in bringing the best public school in our nation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mali. 
There were no further um, participants for public comment. At this time, I will turn the meeting over to Melissa Spash, our Deputy Superintendent, for tonight's budget pre presentation for FY24. Melissa. Thanks, Pat. Uh, good evening. So on the agenda for the superintendent's report is the FY24 budget presentation. Uh, and I'd like to provide a brief overview of the LPS budget process as an introduction to this budget. And you can see it up here. So here you see sort of the, an internal look at how the budget works and grows inside of Lawrence Public Schools. It starts in January uh, with the budget launch. And there we share our district priorities and initiatives, uh, any targeted supports, and then we give each school a funding allocation, a services guide for all of the different um, services that will be available to schools and to the district in the coming year, and then some planning templates around goals, operating plan, and academic services. Then we move in, and this is a really uh, critical piece of the work where after January in that launch, the schools are the ones doing the collaboration around the creation of a budget and priorities. This is um, centered around our teacher leadership teams, which have educators, both teachers as well as paraprofessionals on them. And they meet inside the school and really discuss the goals and the creation of the operating plan and exactly how they want to spend their money in the year. Um, next, after that session happens in March, uh, each school and central office department has a one hour meeting uh, with the, the leadership team and the LAE is invited to participate. We always welcome them. And then there's an opportunity for feedback and revision. After that, the leadership team meets and discusses what's been proposed, any asks that have been made, and we share decisions, uh, and finalize our proposed budget, and we mobilize the process to enact a plan. And then it moves to LAE, which is where we are right now, uh, where um, a proposed budget is presented to the public in LAE, LAE votes, um, and sends that proposed budget to city council. So that's where we are right now. Um, as you may know, the district is currently in the final stages of our search for a CFO. And so for tonight here to present our budget, our proposed budget is Seth Racine from Oakpin Architects, as well as Bill Frangiamore, who's a retired CFO from several school districts and who's been working with our team. We're lucky to have him over the last several months. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Seth Racine. I'm joined by uh, Bill. Do you want to introduce? Uh, hello, Bill Frangimore. Hi. Uh, so it is uh, our pleasure here to present to you, as it was mentioned, uh, many months of work, and there were many, many other people involved in this process. Um, so we'll do our best to sort of summarize this work. For the next slide here. So we're going to walk through a few different things. First of all, uh, we're going to talk about the priorities that this budget represents. Uh, a brief update about revenue, uh, talk about the multi-year uh, budget planning process, uh, how do we spend our budget, where is the money going, and then in terms of next steps. Uh, I also just want to highlight that there is a detailed uh, budget document um, that's been uh, distributed out and then be able to answer a number of other questions you have. So I may refer to it as we go. So there are four major uh, priorities with this budget. Uh, first, uh, it's acceleration academies and summer school opportunities to accelerate student learning, enhance curriculum materials and professional development to promote, uh, to further promote the high quality instruction in every classroom, a holistic learning environment in support of students' academic, physical, and mental wellness, including expanded social, emotional services and extensive um, opportunities in the arts, athletics, and beyond. And finally, there are substantial facility upgrades, repairs, and improvements uh, across the district, as well as preparing for the new Oliver and Leahy school buildings. So I believe at a previous meeting, you received a detailed, um, a more detailed presentation about the revenue and where it comes from. Um, and there are additional uh, slides and information in the budget document that talk about uh, where the revenue comes to support the Lawrence Public Schools budget. I want to highlight a few different things that's not necessarily on this slide, but just to make sure everyone has the same context. Lawrence's revenue, the general fund um, appropriation from the city, is really driven by state aid. This is the Chapter 70 formula, um, where we receive our, the substantial amount of revenue. 
And uh, this is differentiated, this is based on student enrollment counts and based on per pupil rates. Uh, and it has been um, significantly impacted um, about four years ago with the Student Opportunity Act when that was passed that uh, provided additional funding, uh, especially for students with greater needs, whether it was low income students, English learners, or students with disabilities. And if we just sort of think back four years, back in FY21, the average per pupil uh, that was coming to Lawrence was $14,000 to $14,237 per student. That has substantially grown, and so within just four years, next year we are projecting that to be $19,214. Uh, these types of investments uh, are uh, from state aid that is coming directly to Lawrence is allowing to help fund and continue and further and deepen the priorities we mentioned before. Now there are a number of different parts to come up with the appropriation and so as you can see in front of you here we are looking at the current year, fiscal year 2023, and next year 2024. Net school spending is the formula that the state calculates of what is the minimum amount that uh, Lawrence should spend uh, based on its uh, student enrollment and the per pupil rates. This is based on, uh, this includes all uh, Lawrence students who attend public schools, whether they're going to charter schools or uh, school choice. And so there's a sort of a number of other components to this. And when you back those out, including uh, charter tuition assessments, school choice tuition assessments, um, and add back costs that are not eligible, specifically transportation, adult education, and long-term leases, this results in a $260 million appropriation request for next year. Approximately 95% uh, of this is funded by state aid. So if we go to the next slide. It was earlier mentioned, it was talked about the process that was made and I do want to highlight um, credit to the superintendent and his leadership team that they were looking at it from an all funds approach not just the local appropriation, but they took into consideration and projected grant revenue. This is incredibly important right now. Not only is this generally very important to do, but it's especially important right now because there's substantial amounts, millions of dollars of uh, federal uh, pandemic aid uh, that was passed a couple years ago, referred to as ESSER. These funds are providing um, a number of opportunities for additional staffing, in our schools, uh, additional facility improvements, and things like that. This funding is set to expire in September of 2024. By looking at all funding and looking at it over multiple years, uh, the superintendent and his team was sort of able to better figure out how do we make sure that the investments we're making now um, do not go away, that we continue these and keep them going. And so as a first step here, as a summary of that, we're showing you an all funds budget that includes the general fund budget, this is the local appropriation from the city, as well as uh, federal entitlement uh, grants. These are the Title I, II, III, IV-A, IDEA is for students with disabilities, as well as other recurring sources of funding from circuit breaker to private uh, communications grants to finally ESSER. So if we go to the next slide here. Here is an example of, of, at least just from the revenue side of it, of how we are thinking about uh, the funding and how we think about allocating resources looking across uh, the next three years. Go to the next slide. So, a key question now that we've developed our budget. From the general fund perspective, looking at the local appropriation, a very common question to ask is where is it going? Lawrence, like many other school districts, the vast, vast majority go to people, buses, buildings, and out-of-district tuitions. So if you look here, you can see the detail that how much of the actual amount has been spent in FY21, 22, what's been budgeted originally in FY23, and then what's being proposed for next year. Biggest category far and away are salaries at $163 million. 50 million for benefits, including health insurance, retirement, unemployment, and the like. Transportation, there was a new transportation contract that was signed last summer, and this is projected to go up from the 
the general fund burden on this by over 11 million. The total cost is going up by about 2 million. Utilities, we are expected to grow substantially. Uh, facilities, these are like repairs and building improvements. And then out of district tuitions, these are for students with uh, severe special needs who are served in other school settings. So this is the cost of tuition. Uh, I do want to note that this here, the 5.7 million, is only the general fund portion. There are also other funding um, used to support this. And finally, the last major category, this includes every, anything from supplies, materials, uh, curriculum, and everything else. We also provide to you um, the positions that are in, um, in our schools and across the district. This slide here is just a high-level summary of the approximately 2,500 positions across the Lawrence Public Schools. You can see both the positions by type as well as by funding source for next year. I do want to highlight yet again um, in the budget book that you received here, there is a detailed appendix that shows you these positions as well as uh, the budget by school and department. But at a high level, 80% of the positions are providing direct support to Lawrence students from teachers, paraprofessionals, nurses, and such. Finally, uh, what I, uh, it was mentioned before about the process to get us here, um, just a few additional steps we want to note uh, is that we are presenting you tonight. Uh, the budget will be included in uh, the mayor's budget that will go to city council. And uh, the current fiscal year, FY 2023, ends June 30th. The new fiscal year would begin July 1. And so before, it, before the end of June, uh, the budget would, the mayor's budget would be approved by city council and this would be um, our appropriation for the next fiscal year. I'll stop there and see if there's any questions. Any questions from the board? Madam Chair, I have a question. Juana? Um, the, yes, sir, you mentioned that this was COVID pandemic relief dollars that are going to be running out. They're about $36 million worth. How are we ensuring that those teachers, those structures that were leveraged with those dollars can continue in 2024, 2025, or are we going to have to make cuts? Great question. So, um, uh, unlike other districts that are probably seeing a potential funding cliff, uh, Lawrence is in a very fortunate situation because of the Student Opportunity Act that was passed before. So this Student Opportunity Act, maybe I should want to talk a little bit more about this. Um, at the state level, they changed the Chapter 70 funding formula to say we want um, to provide more funding, uh, especially in state aid, uh, to uh, students with greater needs. And we're going to phase in these uh, uh, increases in the tuition um, amounts over six years. It's so important, but it's also going to be a major investment that we're going to do that. And we've had about three years of those, th those increases in the tuition rate. Why I say that's super, uh, that we're incredibly fortunate in Lawrence for this is because these increases that will increase the local appropriation through major millions of, of dollars of state aid will backfill the loss of ESSER, as well as the planning that the superintendent and his leadership team have done to make sure that positions funded by ESSER will have additional f recurring funding sources to make sure that happens, as well as uh, other ways that ESSER is used for one-time resources so we can make sure that these programs continue. Super helpful, and maybe this is not an appropriate question for you, but understand the Student Opportunity Act, understand how it could fill that backlog. Um, but the positions, the 88 positions that ESSER provided for, um, are those positions going to meet, you know, the North Star of the Student Opportunity Act? Are they meeting, you know, the specific needs of marginalized and underserved students? Are those ESSER positions, I don't know what the 88 are that we're going to continue to fund with student opportunity dollars can really make a measurable difference for student outcomes. So there, um, they are uh, projected to identify, we have identified recurring funding sources, including Beyond. the general fund, um, to make sure that these positions continue. And I do want to highlight, it was mentioned 
mentioned before that, that these funding, the, uh, these uh, positions, we want to make sure that they're um, improving students with greater needs. And one of the stipulations of ESSER, especially ESSER 3, the last stimulus bill, the largest one, um, was that at least 20% of that grant was supposed to go towards um, uh, improving student performance and bring kids back from a learning loss that could have been associated with the pandemic. So it sort of fits actually really nicely with the Student Opportunity Act as well. Um, so they sort of fit both needs. Thank you so much. Any further questions? I can just add to that. Some of the key places we've had those FTEs is in interventionists. So interventionists who are there to help accelerate or remediate, depending on what kids need, uh, as well as uh, school adjustment counselors. So much of it has been aimed at SEL and academic growth. And I echo what Seth said in terms of replacing the SOA with what we reduced down on ESSER. Edgar? Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, the, the 2024 proposed salary bump that we see here, is that an, um, an attempt at retention? Is that a um, acknowledgement that there will be more hiring? What, is, what are you attributing the, the big jump in, in, in salaries? Great. Um, thank you. So the increase, uh, that net increase is related to both making sure that um, collective bargaining agreements are funded appropriately, additional positions, as well as um, uh, stipend opportunities for more opportunities to, whether it's through retention, recruitment, professional development opportunities. Um, it was mentioned before about acceleration academies and things like that. Thank you. Madam Chair, and maybe yes. this is a question for Deputy, um, for uh, Assistant Superintendent. Yes. When I look at the, um, your position in staff, so we have 40 officers, but we have eight therapists and assistants. I fully understand we need security, um, but when it comes to therapists and assistants, have we seen an increase? Are we investing additional dollars there? Because at the end of the day, you know, a lot of data shows that um, outbursts could be well supported if we had people who were working with our students one-on-one -on -one and not necessarily just focusing on the back end of things so to do more preventative work. I think that we've done a massive kind of investment in restorative practice and in the positions in our district that support that work. Um, whether it's therapists or it's adjustment counselors or just counselors in the building, we have many culture specialists in all of our schools who are there to support students. So that's been a major piece of our investment and we acknowledge that that work, that very relational work is uh, a place to put our staff and our training. Thanks. I just have one question. Um, has there been a projection of enrollment for next year? Um, so there, there has been a projection of enrollment, um, and I actually want to highlight, bear with me for a second. What page are we on? <laughs> Thank you. Um, so if you look at page 15, we provided a historical, we didn't include the projection, but we do provide um, historical uh, charts on the Lawrence Public Schools enrollment. Oh, and so, uh, I, you know, you, you may be noting this um, just because there was a decline from uh, school year 2020 to 2021. There was a decline in the enrollment from approximately 13,500. It was sort of at that level for a number of years and then declined down to around 13,000 students. Fortunately, that number, those numbers have been about steady um, this decline, though, was seen more at the elementary levels. If you look at the chart below, you can see it by grade span. And so you can notice that um, the pre-K to grade 5 grade span, there was a slight decline from 20 to 2021, while middle school and high school remained steady. So we have a smaller cohort starting to come up from the elementary grades um, that we're monitoring, um, but in the upper grades, it still remains steady. Now, if you had a crystal ball, and I know you don't have one, um, would, these, would this trend impact what our um, allocation will be next year? 
So the good news is that crystal ball is a little easier for me to read because they use October 1 enrollment from um, 2022. 23. The, I want to make sure I'm in the right year. So six months ago, that October 1 enrollment informs next year's budget. All right, so next October 2023, that will inform the FY25 budget. Correct. Correct. Okay. Thank you, I forgot to include the detail there. They look at October 1 enrollment. Um, so if there is an increase in enrollment after October 1, hypothetically, if a number of students move to Lawrence in January, those, are not, those students are not counted in the formula, but if they stay through um, to the next October 1, they would be included in the following year's budget. Okay, thank you. Of course. Any further questions? I thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. At this time, um, I will entertain a motion <clears throat> to move into executive session <clears throat> pursuant to General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Exemption Number 1. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Thank you, Juana. Second? Second. Thank you, Maria. Maria, would you please call the roll? Yes. Hello? OK. Uh, Erika De Leon? Present. Juana Matias? In favor. Maria Muller? Yes. Chair Mariano? Yes. Passes. Motion passed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, just a reminder, we, we will be meeting in executive session in this room, so I'm going to ask that everyone vacate the room, and um, we will not return from executive, we will adjourn from the executive session. Thank you. <laughs>